this is never a good sign right here <laughs> when you're balls deep in a VRV yep never a good sign this is something I brought up before, but this is why labeling is so important because you get crap like that going on. This is actually the additional charge. Um, wrote this on here temporarily until I can get my big Sharpie and just erase all that and make it right. But we've got a couple coil leaks, which is kind of weird. I don't know what the deal is. And what I don't know is if the leak here is migrating this way and just coming out here but um, there and there now we just did some preliminary investigation also trying to mark the spot while we could see it but it's it's back I think it's on this side on that row also dealing with a ridiculous wasp infestation we've got we sprayed all along this yesterday Still have one, two, three, I think four active nests. I mean, they're everywhere. Um, killed probably 15 nests yesterday. <laughs> it's just unreal. Once all of this is taken apart like that, and a couple more trim pieces, we've got to unbraze that and that right there. And then this entire coil will just come right out. Got the coil out and this is how I pressure test these. This adapter here and then this little shark bite fitting. I just want to point out that the reason that I have this particular adapter set up is because the factory braze joint is right here. So they actually swaged this to fit copper over top of it. This will fit inside so the braze that I'm adding is not going to interfere with getting this coil reinstalled. The crack is actually right there. Okay, go ahead and throttle that valve again. Yep, that crack right there. I've showed this before, but here's another look at the guts on a VRV3. We, of course we have like refrigerant storage there this is going to be oil return a bunch of little solenoids um <laughs> when i posted my uh solenoid tester video you know a lot of people just didn't understand the kind of stuff that i work on so try getting your danfoss app down there you know what i'm saying <laughs> oh I like that app and you know I've been using it for a long time but I, I don't think people quite understand the advantages of just a little teeny tiny tester. I've got this fan going just because I don't want to breathe in vaporized aluminum. It would seem like a healthy choice. These are tricky because the copper is so thin. Lay a little braze on there as a heat indicator and we'll try to flow it. There's a look at it and even though under normal circumstances you kind of you kind of want the pipe to melt the braze. In this case it's better to lay the braze on the pipe that way you're adding just enough heat and you can tell when it's hot enough by the way it flows. Um, a better technique for trying to braze this really thin cheap ass copper there's the second crack right there so what's the story here this one seems to be really small and th these were hard to find no oil and we only really found it as the system was running for whatever reason very weird um, but cracks are like that sometimes and sometimes they don't quite open up until you start jostling the copper pipe but um, as the coil just sits in the unit and has not been disturbed sometimes they will hold pressure quite well until you know they're they're either hot or cold or something like that now really 
I'm probably going to recommend that this coil be replaced because we have two compromised areas here in this little stretch. So probably just shitty quality control. But the issue is, is that this system has got to be running. Um, they really can't be left down due to state regulation. So we're just going to get it running and then the customer can decide what to do after that. better look at that one again laying the braze down first and then flowing it is the key sometimes I just feel like I'm paddling upstream without a paddle but we have another leak somehow on this same uh, pipe right here so I'm gonna take the entire circuit out and just be done with it now what what could possibly have caused this besides maybe shitty quality control? I mean, maybe there's a con quality control issue. I know that another company has been doing the PMs out here, and I think they just recently washed coils. So, you know, did they, did they hit the coil while it was running and hot, and it just kind of caused these kind of cracks? I, I, I don't know very weird but I'm gonna take the entire circuit out because I just can't chance it anymore that is crazy unbelievable now to be honest and again we don't have oil anywhere so I don't know I know that one had a little bit of discoloration on the outside that one was leaking after the unit was running this one I'm not sure you know, maybe it was just the act of getting the coil out, flexing some stuff, but unbelievable. Got this circuit isolated right here, and my favorite way to do that is just to snip this with dikes, and then I leave the ends close, but with a gap like that, and just cover the entire thing with braids. And so that helps stabilize everything, and, uh, obviously seals it up really well so now this entire circuit is removed that will affect the efficiency some but uh, not that much it's you know there's a lot of systems out there that are running with removed circuits and it's not ideal but now the bottom circuits tend to be uh, more important um, for sub cooling and things like that but this system has such fine control over refrigerant that at the end of the day, it's going to be fine. And the customer uh, will most likely decide just to replace this coil. I mentioned unbrazing this earlier, but this is a good option as well. I just decided to cut it and use a spin swage on there. And, you know, the, these are now like ridiculously cheap on Amazon. You should pick up a set. I mean, it's like 20 bucks for a set. Um, but obviously you always want to swage that piece so you don't have to braise from underneath and uh, the uh, 3 8 is is really great uh, too because it avoids the cracking that you get from hydraulics there's the finished product right there along with that joint there getting the unit back together now so we can get it in vacuum mode mode 21 you have to put these in vacuum mode before you start pulling it or not before but eventually we've got the vacuum going this fan is a lifesaver it's hot as satan's nutsack out here I and mean, we are just cooking absolutely cooking i live in a part of the country that when it gets hot it also is ridiculously humid so as a way of just really wearing you down but we're getting it done going pretty well Got it relabeled, it's running, I uh, just had it in charging mode, got the trim charge in and everything, so I'm not going to film anymore, just need to pack up and get off this freaking inferno of a roof.